Well, everybody, August is in the books, so here are all the games that I beat for August. So the very first game that I beat for August was TMNT for the GBA. This is a beat em up. Um, I've seen a couple people play it, but I never actually got the time to sit down and play it. And I was feeling like I wanted to play another beat em up. This one is a really good beat em up. This is a game where you could be one of four turtles and I always choose Mikey. So I decided to switch it up and see what it was going to be like. but. You never know with these kind of games. You don't know how it's going to be, but I liked it. It kind of reminds me of Shredder's Revenge, but just simpler. There's less characters because it is a handheld game. I do like that they do keep the storyline similar to what the actual cartoon was. Uh, I think it's kind of similar to also the PlayStation 2 game and the GameCube game that came out. I don't know how much different it is because I've never seen that one being played. But I also, I believe that one was a beat-em-up. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But I liked it. I enjoyed it. I definitely recommend it for anybody who's ever wanted to play another TMNT game and not sure about it. Be right up your alley. Now the next two games I wanted to put together, even though I didn't complete them back-to-back. -back, that is Grand Theft Auto 3 and Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Now the reason why I wanted to put them back to back was because they were part of the definitive edition and I kind of want to talk about them the same because they were both a glitch fest. So for those who don't know, they were a port of a mobile game and they really are rough. Nobody's play tested these games. So basically what happened is I started off with, I believe Vice City. I was getting stuck at a part where it's the mall and the AI character kept getting glitched into a wall. So somebody would shoot him and he would be pushed into the wall and then there was a part of the wall that was not there. So you would think, oh, he can't run through that part of the wall. No, he can. He went through. He gets stuck in the restaurant and he couldn't get it out. And that's what pissed me off because there's nothing I can really do about that. Like. I just have to let myself get shot or just restart the mission and that's the one thing I, I don't recommend these definitive edition versions unless you're going to buy them super dirt cheap because they are very difficult to complete because they're really difficult. GTA games at the very end are frustrating and they sometimes you have to keep replaying the same mission over and over again. Thankfully the only thing they let you do is you could just start right from where you left off. You don't have to go drive all the way from one point of the map to the other point of the map. So that's the only thing that I like that they did, but that's one of the only things they did right. <laughs> Everything else is very weird. Um, there was a part in the GTA 3 where every time I died, I would see a doppelganger of that character. So if I died in the water, he would just be standing there in the water. And I'd be like, oh, there's a, an, an NPC just walking. No, it's, it's him. It's literally him just standing there dead. And so that's another weird thing to see is see your character just standing around staring at you. It feels like a horror movie. <laughs> so I don't recommend these games. I recommend if you do find any version such as the PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360 versions, or even if you can find them for the PS2, get those versions. They're way better. They don't destroy your spirit <laughs> for playing a game when you're like, I clearly killed that person. Why is the mission not completing? It, it's very frustrating to stand there, say the mission is completed. Is is there an NPC stuck in a wall somewhere? I, I don't see anybody. What's going on? So definitely recommend the PS2, anything else. But if you do find it and it's dirt cheap, be prepared for a glitch fest. So, they're good games, just not those versions. After GTA 3, I played Magical Drop Pocket. This is another game that is for the Neo Geo Pocket, and I need, I like Neo Geo Pocket color games. I like sometimes just to sit back and just enjoy handheld games because they're a little bit like shorter, like about maybe an hour, and this one is just like another magical drop game. You literally pick any of the characters 
and you're in a competition and you have to beat each person to get to the next level to be able to get a wish granted and I like these type of games they kind of remind me of Tetris or Puyo Puyo so if you're into those kind of games definitely recommend it for you because I have seen a lot of people play these and they just they, they're kind of like time wasters but in a good way they don't make you feel like you wasted your time you feel like oh my car ride is done or my plane ride is done or whatever is going on it lets you escape from the world for a little bit and you can zone out so highly recommend this one the next game is called harmony the fall of reverie i hope i'm saying that correctly uh it's basically a donut game the people who made life is strange and remember me they made this game so what you do is you have a choose your own adventure type of game like life is strange your decisions factor in and change the story as it goes along um the one thing that's different is your name is polly you're a woman who gets a message that your mom is missing and you have to go find her so when you get to the house and you get to your old town you are flooded with memories but you also find a weird necklace you don't know what it is only to find out that it's taking you to another dimension and you meet a bunch of spirits people you don't know who they are and you have to go along and find out what they are but they all have an agenda you have to find out their agenda and you have to figure out what they're trying to do and you have to also figure out if they're good or bad or what's happening and why your mom is missing i enjoy the game um there is kind of a weird like it's it shows you a screen of like decisions you can make but it doesn't move every decision doesn't move your story along and i don't know if if that was really good in a way because it kind of threw me off um stories should always progress i understand that there's tangents and different things that you need to check out and watch but if you're gonna have a tangent just let that play out like just just don't give me a choice to play that just show me something and then move on to like a choice after that narratively that really didn't give me anything to worry about like i kind of was just like oh okay that's a story tangent and people can perish in this story so just fyi it's got a disclaimer that it's like a tough story to watch um but i'm kind of used to stories that are like that because they need to be told so just fyi if you like life is strange there's a new game to play I know it was on sale for a little bit, but I don't know if it's still on sale, so definitely check it out. It's on Nintendo Switch, Xbox, PlayStation, so enjoy. The next game I got was what I thought was going to be a horror game. Pretty much this is called The Sin, and it's a narrative game as well. It's all in pencil style, where it felt like when I saw the trailer that I was going to get like a horror type game. But in reality, it's kind of like a thriller. You know there's something bad that's going to happen, but you don't know what it is. So you're trying to get through the story. And you are watching a family and the father is not very nice to everybody. And that, I'll put it lightly. So you are seeing the perspective of the kids and sometimes the perspective of just like the family in general so it's a short game it's like an hour um depending on how long it takes you to read the story so i don't know if i recommend this one it's 50 50. if you're into story driven games yes highly recommend this but if you're not no just, just pay it cheap or don't play it at all really because i don't know i i really was mixed feelings about this game i no, this game needs to be played, but I don't really know if it played out the way I think it should. I kind of think it should have been a horror game. Like, um, there was a game called Lydia that I played on stream. Thought that was a good, like, take on what the person was feeling when she was dealing with all this stuff that was going on with her family. So maybe that would have been a better take on it, but I still, I support indie games. So when they're on sale, I pick them up just to see what they're like. If they're, they're not a great game, I only paid a few bucks, but yeah, got it on sale. 
The next game is a fighting game and it's called Fight. And it kind of reminds me of a knockoff of Mortal Kombat meets Street Fighter meets Tekken. I don't know what it's trying to be. It's a mid fighter. It's not great. It's a fighter that um, there's different people and they're looking supposedly different. But once you start fighting with the characters, they all have the same fighting style. They all have the same moves. So it's basically a button mashing game in a while because you're trying to knock off the character that you're fighting before they can get into a pattern of their moves because they're all the same. Literally, they all have the same punches. They all have the same kicks. Doesn't matter if they're smaller or bigger or whatever type of fighter, they all have the same fighting style. And I don't know what to make of this. I know it's an indie team, but even an indie team can be a little bit more inventive on fighting styles. I don't know if this was like their first fighting game. I have no idea because I don't know the development team. I looked them up a little bit to see like what they were all about and they kind of just do different types of games. And so I don't know if I want to play another game and see if it, maybe they're just better at others types of games, but this didn't even credit me on the Switch when I played it as a game that I played. <laughs> like I played it for a while because I was like, I wanted to be, because there was no really storyline. I wanted to play it and I was like, oh, let me try this or let me do this. So I played and beat every single character just to count it because I normally don't do that. I normally play the story all the way through and call it a day. But this one I had to because I was like, there is no story. So I literally just was like, every character, I'm going to beat them. And even on, what is it? I think they called it medium difficulty. I don't remember. That was not difficult. So if you're going to find it, pay dirt cheap again like the other game and just call it a day because it's a game that's like, eh, I played it. No story. I mean, there is a story. It's about a, a like same thing like Mortal Kombat. They're all there for one mission. Like, they're all getting the sent a mission to like the area, but that's Mortal Kombat. I don't. I don't know. After a mid fighting game, I wanted to play one of the other fighting games that I haven't played in a while, and I wanted to go through all the fighting games that I haven't played yet. And I looked at my collection that I have. I have a World Heroes collection and it's like an anthology and I looked and I said I don't remember if I've ever played and finished World Heroes Perfect. So I was like you know what I don't remember it. It's gonna be a brand new game either way and I picked a character named Max and he's a football fighter and you think oh he's gonna be a tank. He's gonna be like Zangief or something like that but he actually has some speed to him. So like if you really want to you can use his football athletics and just like keep brushing the person i really enjoyed this fighter like i really enjoyed the style of of world heroes perfect they all had their own unique take on everything and you didn't know what you were ex gonna expect when you got actually into the fighting game itself like you thought oh this fighter is gonna be really really everything's gonna be exactly the same as like street fighter but no like if you have a, a character who's a little bit bigger that character might be faster and you might actually have to worry about speed instead of them going towards you and using their tank mobilities and knocking you out and taking a lot of your health bar you might actually have a fighter who can really use their speed to their advantage and never underestimate every single character in this game because you can get destroyed by somebody and not know how that happened and you're like oh snap so i really enjoyed this one definitely recommend it Yet again, another fighter. I decided to play a Street Fighter game that I have not played and finished. I really don't remember this fighter either. Like, I felt like I did, but I was like, maybe I just played it for a little bit and then just put it down because I've played and completed Street Fighter 2 Turbo or Street Fighter 2 a lot throughout my lifetime. Like, I'll play it like once a year, beat it at least. So I never count that one on the list. But I never finished, I believe... Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. I've played in the arcade, I've played it all the time, but it's a fighter that was very difficult. Um, so the one thing I loved about Street Fighter 3 Third Strike was you can choose your own fights. They'll show you two fights, like two characters that are in your storyline, like Sean 
I believe was being trained by Ken, that his his sensei, and he gets to choose each fighter. So I'm like, okay, cool. That's that's awesome. He gets to choose the fighter. Very cool options. And I really enjoyed this game. I recommend it. The only thing is, I was shocked by the very last fighter who I did not know he had a revive. <laughs> so be prepared for that. Like people who have second forms, but they keep going with their second form. Like usually the second form is that's it. Like they, they have two fights and they're done. But no, he can go for two revives. So like I was shocked by that. So be prepared. That's all I have to say about that one. Great fighter. And the very last game that I completed was Tony Hawk's Project 8. I love this game. This game has been a staple in my Tony Hawk collection. I've always kept it no matter what. Even when it got stolen, I rebought it back. I have beaten this game once before because technically you can complete everything. But if you don't get the, the top tier, which is Project 8, you have to be in the top 8. You're not done with the game. I love the game. Um, it's basically you work your way through and it's kind of like an open world game in a way. And that's another reason why I like, I like open world games is it's not super linear where there's each level. It's There's levels, but they're in part of the map. So you can go through the suburban area, you can go to the school, you can circle back around and go to the suburbs you can go back to you know what? I'm gonna go now to the hilltop I'm gonna go to the theme park I'm gonna go around and there's little areas and you have different basically I call them missions where you are trying to finish the pro game part of it where there's pro skaters who are challenging you something and you can go and there's oh there's a grind I have to grind this ledge all the way to this spot okay got pro spot there we go let's go to this one then get a sick let's get this and the missions are literally scattered throughout the world so you have to investigate the whole world and I enjoy it like the very first time I got Project 8, I was so stoked. I was yelling. My family was like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, I just got Project 8. They're like, okay, cool. It's very difficult to sometimes get if you don't know how to play, like, the way the game is meant to be played. So you just have to keep leveling up every single mission you can. And I really enjoy this. I recommend this if you have not played this. I know uh, these games don't get talked about a lot because they were during the time when Ride happened and Shred happened and a lot of people were like, Ugh. so Project A is a great one, just like American Wasteland and all those like underground. They're not the main storyline ones like Pro Skater 1, 2, and 3, but I do enjoy this on the Xbox 360. I have a good time with it. I do know a lot of people say that they get like motion sickness or it gives them a headache because... There's a part in a feature that was brand new that was really a staple where it's a slow motion where you all of a sudden trigger it and then the board starts going slow motion so you can kick, you can hold the kick and then kick back and then kick the board this way. And you want to keep trying to get as many tricks as you can right before the ground gets to you. So you have to keep going. And I really enjoyed this when I first got it. I still play it every now and then. But... When I started playing this, it was like maybe a month ago, I put it down because I was like, I'm going to go take my time with this one. I'm not going to just rush through it. And I really had a fun time. So highly recommend this one if you can. And that's it for August. There are all the games that I completed for the month. I got 10 done. Let me know. How was August for you? Did you complete any games that were brand new or comfort games, as Peter says? I will catch you next time. Thank you for watching my video. If you like it, give it a like. If you're new, check out a couple other videos. Give it a sub. Helps out the channel. And I'll talk to you all next time. Bye, everybody. Linda the Gamer Gal. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Gal. She's here, she's playing